Hey, before we get into it, UK tour on sale now. London, Manchester, and Liverpool. LouSpears.com. Come and see me. I'm going to London on Wednesday, 14th of August, Manchester on the 22nd of August, and Liverpool on the 23rd of August. I cannot wait. London is uh, actually going to sell out like fucking really quick. It's almost full already, and I haven't even posted about it or talked about it. People have just figured it out. So I think these UK shows are going to go quick. Get them. Uh, but but uh, I'm also going to Gold Coast on the 31st of May. That's this Friday. Then I do Brisbane on the 1st of June. Then Sunshine Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, uh, Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton as well. Loosebears.com. Get your tickets. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 338 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm in a shit mood. All right. I'm over it. I'm sick of my, I'm sick of my dog. I went to Newcastle, I did a great show, had an amazing weekend. I come home and my dog was really excited to see me. I finally made some money, sold out the show. I thought, oh, good, that'll, that'll be my mortgage payment and my groceries. And then my dog was like, yeah, that's really cool. Watch this. And then fucking wrecked her legs, went for a run. Got ex Literally, I got home. I'm still holding my suitcase. She runs up the side she runs down the side and then she just starts limping oh off to the vet we go she's done her acl or the dog version of her acl the way that her leg is stacked is because because she's a rescue and i and rescuing dogs is good and you should rescue dogs but it, but every now and then they remind you why people buy them from the shops all right but but hey she was from a breeder okay so someone else would have gotten got ended up with her Someone else did end up with her and we're like, this sucks. I shouldn't have bought a dog from a Bunnings car park. Take it to the pound. And then I got wound up with her. I wanted a little staffy. They're 20 kilos. I got a 42 kilo monster whose legs don't fucking work. The way that her leg, she's so tall. You've seen her. A dog's leg is supposed to kind of curve like a question mark, right? Human joints, the legs, they're stacked on top of each other. Dog's legs are supposed to curve so the ligaments aren't stacked in between the bones. If they're stacked on top of each other, the two bones grind the ligaments to dust and the, the, the cartilage and all that. And that's what has happened to her knees, right? She finally did one. She, she found out that I, that I sold out a Newcastle show. She's like, great, you should be able to afford to do this and then fuck her leg. So we, got her, we had to get her surgery. Um, and she's fine, but fuck, taking care of a dog after surgery is, is such a hassle. It sucks. She's got plates in her leg. Basically, she had the same surgery in her leg that I got in my face. They cut the bone, they move it, and then they bolt it back together, and then the bone fuses the gap eventually. So we've got her in the cage, and dude, they sent her home on fentanyl. I don't know what all these cokeheads are complaining about. She loves it. A bit of surprise fentanyl has really brightened her day. She's a big fan of the Fenty. Fenty B, she loves it. She came home. She was moaning. <sighs> fentanyl and morphine. She's shitting herself in that box. She's having such a good time. She is shitting herself all the time. And because she's shitting herself... All right, she stuck. She of course, because you can't have one problem with a dog. You got to have thirty-five. Her legs fucked. It's swollen. It's shaved. How big is her ankle? Huge. It looks like she's she's walking around with a fucking watermelon attached to her foot while shitting herself. All right, she can't use her back leg because she just got it chopped up. And there's no such thing as a cast for a dog's back leg. So I have to. I have, when she's in the cage, she wears like this thing around her chest and then I, I loop a bit of fabric around her belly and I lift that up like, like a, you know when you, you're carrying in the shopping for your mum and you carry six bags because you want to be really strong and impress her and she pretends to be impressed so she doesn't have to carry the milk in and you're like, yeah, look how fucking strong I am. It's like that, but with my dog. I'm carrying her like a, like a packed Woolies bag full of fucking milk and frozen peas trying to take her outside so, she, so that she can do a poo that she's already done inside, involuntarily. And because she keeps shitting herself, her bum hole's glowing red now. 
It looks like it looks like a, a, a like a like an evil robot's eye. It, that shit is glowing. It looks like a target. It's not good. Right? And because she keeps shitting herself and her assholes become all itchy, like a few of you unwashed listeners. Oh. <laughs> her bum holes become all itchy, so she keeps like you know when dogs after they poo, they sometimes they like slam their asshole into the grass and then boot scoot. She keeps trying to do the do that, but she doesn't scoot because her legs don't work. So she just keeps stamping the ground with her shitty asshole. But she comes in the house and she does that. Pillows, blankets, the carpet. She's leaving the fucking royal seal just stamped on all my shit. You know, I told my parents, I'm like, oh, Bobby needs a surgery. Put her down immediately in unison. That's, and that's how, that's our parents' generation. That's the, that's the boomer Gen X take. Oh, your dog feels a bit sick. Kill it. Kill your dog and then write a book about how, how, how good you are at making tough decisions. (laughs) That's what I should have done. As soon as she started limping, I should have just run her over with a car and then written a book about it. That's how you know I'm good at comedy. Because I can kill a dog ruthlessly. Right? So, but here's the thing. She's always had bad joints and legs and stuff since birth because she came from a bad breeder. So, we're on like, I think it's day three only. Okay? Now, to put it in con- in context... With my surgery that I got, I didn't start chewing anything for like a month. She, on day two, was walking around. It's now day three or four. And she is obviously still in pain, but she's in so much less pain than she was in before the surgery because her legs were just fucked that she thinks she's better than she's ever been. So now she's like, all right, cool. Should we go for a run? Can I do a backflip? And the vet stressed to us a million times, she can walk slowly, but if she jumps on anything, if she does a fast turn, if she leaps up, she'll break it. So she's like, oh, let, let's, let's go for a run. I've been cooped up for everywhere, just pulling my pants. Let's do something. I'm like, you're sick. She's like, no, I'm not. I feel better than I ever have. I'm on fentanyl. I'm on fentanyl and my leg works, finally. <laughs> let's sprint. Fucking dog, man. Don't get one. Don't get a dog. Because then you love them and then they go, oh, fix my leg for thousands of dollars or kill me. So guys, patreon.com slash Lou Spears. That's how you support my fucking shit dog that I love very much. You know why I'm annoyed? Because uh, I, I woke up this morning to let her out. And she just wouldn't fucking cooperate. She had been really good, but today she woke up and she's like, I'm all better. I don't need help. Thanks. I'm actually totally fine. I don't know who shaved my leg, but I feel good. (laughs) That's what I was thinking about how confusing this would be for her. Because she loves the vet. She's such a lovely dog. She just loves going anywhere. She loves the vet. It's one of her favorite places to go. And this time she went to the vet to see all of her friends and get weighed and jump. She, like she, she knows the routine. We take her to the vet. She goes, oh, sweet. We're at the vet. Let's go and sit on the scale and see how much I weigh. And then I get a treat. Don't even have to ask her to do it anymore. All these other dickheads come in with their dogs that don't listen. They try and sit them on the scale. They're jumping up. They're running around. They're trying to sniff the other dogs. Bob's just on a fucking mission. Let's see how much I weigh. I've never seen anyone more excited to get on a set of scales that wasn't an anorexic 17-year-old girl. (laughs) And those girls aren't eating treats after that scale. (laughs) She gets and she sits on the scale and we go in and 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 we talk to the doctor and she doesn't understand English, so she thinks we're all just having a good time hanging out together, but but really we're just talking about how much her fucking leg costs. But that's fine. Right, and then she goes into the vet, and then and then she just uh, someone sticks her with something, and then she just passes out, and she wakes up half retarded on morphine and fentanyl, shitting herself. She must have think she got she she got teleported. It was weird enough for me when I was off my head on oxycontin and morphine. I didn't have any fentanyl. 
You know what she, you know how they're giving her the scent? She's wearing a, a patch, like a nicotine patch. <laughs> but it's it's a fentanyl patch. That's awesome. That's really good. I reckon they should sell that at 7 Eleven. There'd be lines around the block in LA. <laughs> maybe you maybe you could do a, a fentanyl zin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just just have a little pouch and you put it in your top lip. You start going cross-eyed. <laughs> oh, I've shit myself. So, yeah, that's that's happening. And she, anyway, so I, I wake her up in the morning and uh, we've got a, we've got a, like a thing to wrap around her belly so that she doesn't use her back legs because we've got stairs inside the house that they unavoidable. We have to use them. It's only like four steps. And she's just like, let's fucking jump. I'm like, no. And I grab her and then I almost stack it and land on top of her. And I'm already pissed off. And then I get her, finally get her outside and down the steps to get to the backyard. And then she wants to go for a fucking run. And then she starts pulling. And I'm like, don't pull. And then she pulls. And then the way that she pulls is, of course, with her back legs that she thinks have been fixed. And so I don't want to pull her. So then I just start keeping up to her pace. And then she's like, oh, we're running. Let's run. I want to go. I want to go and get another fucking fent patch and put it on her head. Stupid dog. And then I finally get her on the grass safely. Thank God. I've just woken up. I'm pissed off. My day's ruined. Don't know if you can tell by this podcast. Uh, and then I go to take the, the the belly band thing that I've been carrying her back half on, the, the 25 kilos on her back half, and I'm going to take that off, and I slip it under her, and then she just stamps the royal seal on it. Just gets her shitty asshole all over it. I'm like, oh, great. Now I can't use that to get you back in the house because I can't put that near your wound. Excellent. I'll carry you back in. Deadlift this fucking fentanyl... Addicted, retarded dog. Bring it back in and put it in the cage. And then this was after we just took her back to the vet because we thought she was in pain because she was crying and crying and crying. So we thought something had gone wrong with the surgery because she's just sitting in a in a cage going, Hours. So we thought, oh fuck, something's gone wrong. Turns out she just wanted to go, to, she just wanted me to be next to the cage. <laughs> she was just lonely. She didn't want me to sleep in my bed. So I've I so for the last three nights I've slept on the fucking floor next to the cage that smells like dog shit. So I'm having a great week, guys. I'm having an excellent week. And, and, uh, and fuck, she's so lucky that she has a good personality. Cause there are people out there that, you know, you see someone, oh, I had to put my dog down. And it's like, no, you didn't. You just, you found there was, it was an option. It was one of the options. <laughs> you know, most people have to put their dogs down. Some people put their dogs down and there's a big difference. You know, for example, I remember I had a rabbit when I was a boy. I was about 12 years old and it broke its front leg and we took it to the vet and dad came home and came to me because it was my rabbit and I love the rabbit, but dad did not. It was my rabbit, but it was, it was a rabbit to dad. And he said, there's three options, Lewis. We can either fix the leg, which will be very expensive. Or we can remove the leg, which will be a, which will still be expensive, but will be a lot cheaper than that. Or we can put the rabbit down. <laughs> and I said, let's go with the cheaper option. And he went, oh, we can put it down. I went, no, get it get the leg amputated. Don't kill my rabbit. And he went, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. We won't. Yeah, we'll get it amputated. You know, it's like those situations. Where if I wasn't in the picture, dad would be like, we had to put the rabbit down. No, you didn't. You put the rabbit down. 
You didn't have to. So Bobby's fine. Until she does her other leg. Because that's a fucking time bomb waiting to happen. Do you know what's really funny about this whole situation? The leg that hasn't had the surgery, that used to be the bad leg. But then she fucked the other one more. So now the one that she's fucked that we fix will become the good leg and the other one will be the bad leg. And at some point, she'll do that one too. We go, can't you do them both at once? And the vet looked at me and was like, do you, can you promise me that she will never for the next six weeks jump or run or change directions quickly during recovery? And I said, let's do one leg. You know what? I reckon that dog would be so much happier if she was just a head. <laughs> if we could just figure out to just remove the body and it was just a head. She would love that. I could carry her around in my in a in a handbag. Take her to events and stuff. She'd love it. I uh, you know what? I would love it. She'd be much less of a hassle. I wouldn't have to worry about the royal seal appearing on coats and cushions and just shit you know it's it's it scared me so much when she first did it the the when she just tried to wipe her ass because you've seen her do it yeah she just drops instantly yeah because she can't do it slowly because she, her leg is healing she at least knows that so when i first took her outside and she dropped i thought she just broke her leg that we just got fixed and it gave me a fucking panic attack. And then she just started scooting, rubbing her ass on the grass. Oh, thank God. And now every now and then in the house, she'll just leave the, leave like, you know, we'll, we'll come, we'll be walking and there'll be just, just like a, a flower. We'll be like, someone's <laughs> cooked here. The, the stamp of approval, the Royal seal. <laughs> it's disgusting, but she's fine. And she will be fine as long as I continue to sleep on the fucking floor next to her cage so she doesn't cry. <sighs> you know what my, my dad said uh, when I was telling him about the, the surgery? He goes, I go, he's like, you should just put it down. I'm, like, I, no, I'm not putting the dog down, okay? She helped me through my recovery and through all the shit that I went through. The least I can do for this dog is help her through this. It's a high success rate. The vet told me he's done this to dogs when, they've, when they're one years old and then he's put them down at 14. And there's been no issues. It's very safe, common surgery for bigger dogs. It's fine. And he goes, you know, dogs aren't really supposed to live to be old. <laughs> he goes, I've never, you know, when, when we were growing up, we never saw old dogs. I was like, what do you mean you never saw old dogs? He goes, oh, well, you know, like they just didn't really, they just, they just died. I'm like, and you know, when someone just starts saying something and you're like, you, there's more to this story. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you never saw an old dog when you were growing up? He's like, oh, well, people just didn't have old dogs. I'm like, no, you saw young dogs. He goes, yeah. He, so they, so why did they not make it to old age? He goes, oh, I don't, I don't think they're really supposed to get old. I'm like, no. Because every dog that we ever had, we put them down when they were very old. All right? We've had three dogs make it past 12. That's old. So what's, what are you missing? And then mum goes, oh, well, they would, no one really kept them in their yard, I think is why. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, oh, well, no one really had a front fence. Um, so, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, dogs just got hit by cars, you know, and that's how that's how they went. I say, like, oh, okay, so so you so so everyone everyone you knew was such a shit dog owner that they just let their dog run on the road and be, and become flat. So I got to put my dog down because she hurt her leg. Yeah. <laughs> well, dogs aren't really supposed to get old. It's, that's that's like going, oh, women aren't really supposed to survive childbirth. It's like, we've, we worked out how they can, so that's how we do it now. All right. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the show, guys. Uh, 
I'm, I can't believe I'm doing a UK tour. I'm so I'm so excited about that. That's a really good thing about this week. You know, I got um, an email from the club uh, in London. They were like, hey, don't know what's going on because uh, you haven't posted about this, but we're selling tickets like crazy. And I think that's from people manually checking the club website or my website or something because I've not posted about it. I have now. So it looks like London's going to sell out for sure. We might even be able to add another one, which would be really exciting. Um, but don't wait for that. If you want tickets, you should get them. So far, we've got uh, London and Manchester and Liverpool shows. And uh, yeah, we just added Liverpool, which is really cool. Um, that's about an hour away from Manchester. So I'm hoping that I don't just split my ticket sales in half because that's pretty close. Although in Australia, that's close. Because England is so dense. I don't know. Do people travel an hour to something? Or do they expect a show in Manchester and Liverpool? For example, like, we're about an hour away from the city here in Frankston. And if someone comes to Victoria, I will travel an hour and a half to go see them. But I feel like a lot of places like England or, uh, I don't know, a, a biggest place, states in America, they don't do those hour-long trips. It's like you come to us. Um, because you have the population to sustain that. So I'm hoping that happens. Um, but yeah, man, like the, ideally we, we're still booking it. Um, so ideally we would love to be doing shows from London all the way down to Scotland and just do a show every like two or three hours or something like that in, in all the major cities that we can hit. If we can book them, we don't, we've never done this before. It's just me and Mitch booking this. We're doing it all independent. Uh, and we're just trying to find comedy clubs that we like. So, yeah, it's very exciting, though. I, I, I never thought um, that I'd be doing selling out shows uh, in the UK. I mean, I'm calling it a little bit premature, aren't I? Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm, to, I'm selling out. I haven't even begun to, to sell out yet. All right. We'll see. Well, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm manifesting, I'm speaking it into existence. I'm trying to improve my mood after my fucking shit dog stamped its seal of approval on my pillow. So London is going to be good. I can't, I can't wait to to get there and hear just someone go, bottle of water, water bottle, governor, poor breach. <laughs> God save the king. Prince Andrew doesn't sweat in it. Beans for breakfast. Beans for breakfast. Yeah, I uh, I really want to find out if um, if British food is as disgusting as everyone I've ever met has said that it is, and also is as disgusting as it looks. Like I reckon it I reckon it goes if you if you're talking like uh, widely disrespected cuisines, uh, like the bottom two is like British food and then Indian street food, uh, and and Indian street food used to not even be on the scale. It's just TikTok has put it there. You know, before it was just British food was the widely hated. Now, you guys are lucky because it's Indian street food is just nicked underneath you. And that's, and that's actually only because we see how it's made. I bet the Indian street food actually tastes quite nice. See, that's, that's the problem. If you sh showed the preparation of British food, I probably would have no issue with it health-wise. But the taste, according to everyone, is that it's horrific. Mm. But the only reason why Indian street food seems disgusting is because we see some unwashed barefoot man kneading soup with his hairy toes. The same toes that walk through sewerage to get to work. Yuck. Yuck. Gross. Oh, but the finished product of the, all that, that Indian street food, if you showed me the final five seconds of all that Indian street food, I would look at it and go, yum. When I was in London, I was staying at a hostel. Oh, you've eaten British food. Yeah. Thoughts? Well, I was staying in a hostel called the Walrus Hostel. Yep. Um, where was it? It was uh, Waterloo, like next to the, right on top of Waterloo train Named station. Named after, the, after the, the female nightlife in Britain. I've never been there. I'm just. I thought it was named after the Abyssal. The Abba song. Waterloo. <laughs> I thought you said the walrus. Oh, I've misinterpreted what you said. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, there was a. Have you been putting a, Bobby's fentanyl patch <laughs> on your leg? There was a, a a cafe next to the Walrus Hostel in Waterloo, mm. and it was um fucking atrocious. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> Let's go down to the cafe in it. Bottle of water. Seven pounds for a, a like a. Like an English breakfast, and I went three times, and every time it was completely different. <laughs> what do you mean? It was like it tasted different or different ingredients in your English breakfast? It was. It tasted different. Like the first time, yeah. I thought it was amazing. The second time, it was clearly like the eggs were old. Yeah, and then the third time, like it was just inedible. Because <laughs> seven pound, what's that? That's like twenty twenty three dollars or something. That's like normal this breakfast like price. Fourteen, isn't it? Because it's like double. Is it double? Yeah, I can't remember. Well. Okay, if you're only paying 14 bucks for a breakfast, that's probably your fault. Yeah, about $13, yeah. $13. Okay, well that's your that's your fault. And then and then uh, they have like chicken shops everywhere. Yes. And that it's awful, but you know when food's awful but it's kind of good. Yeah. That's what all the chicken shops are. Yeah, I think that the one of the fascinating things about uh, England um, that I really want to try is their their Chinese and let me get my quotation marks out. Chinese food. They serve chips. Yes. They have deep fries in their in their fucking Chinese uh, place Chinese. and it's not for dim sims. <laughs> which aren't even really Can Chinese. The Chinese. Yeah, should we get a fucking Chinese for dinner, mate? Before we go to the football game, I'll get a couple of bottle of waters as well. Remember, kids. Don't forget to not brush your teeth before we go out. Is this how you sell tickets in a, in a nation? You just relentlessly and ignorantly bash their cuisine and culture and accent before you come out? Yeah, look, mate, if you're going to make fun of us, we ain't going to come to your show. I got the most English DM the other day, and uh, I'm going to attempt to do uh, an English accent. That that really fat racist bloke yelling, that's the only English accent I can do. And I can kind of do a posh one, uh, but not really. Um, but I got a, I got an unbelievably British DM. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, okay. I think I'm going to have to scroll back a little bit. British people just have bad teeth and eat bad food. Yeah, I, that's that's one that's one thing that really sucks about this surgery that I got uh, is that now that the braces process is finished, I'm not going to fit in in England at all. Like I've got I've got full. I used to have proper British teeth. I used to, you know, remember that Simpsons gag, the the book of British smiles. <laughs> that that used to be me, um, but now I've got full on American mouth. Okay, I can't find this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's got from a guy called Lewis. Lewis. That's a very English name. Um, <clears throat> You've kept bloody quiet about your London show. Just bought my ticket, though. Absolutely gassed to see you. <laughs> You've kept bloody quiet about your London show. Just bought my ticket, though. Absolutely gassed to see you, mate. Bottle of water, water bottle, and then he and then like for eight times in a row he just he just goes bottle of water, which is really interesting. And that was it. That was Bevo that sent that to me. Actually, I, I misread it. I thought it said Lewis. That was actually Bevo. And then he ate a hot dog without chewing. <laughs> So I, you know what I, I cannot wait to get down to England is cool. I get to do shows. Yeah, great. I get to see people after the show. Cool. I get to have a, uh, a fucking Chinese with some chips, mate. Whatever. I want to go to Warhammer World. That's why I'm going to your country is I'm going for Warhammer World and that's it. A lot of people will go down to Buckingham Palace <laughs> to take a photo with, with the Queen's corpse. Not me. I'm going down to Warhammer World. Have you heard of Warhammer World? No. You fucking loser. Have you heard of Warhammer? Yeah. Have you heard of Disney World? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Warhammer World, okay? Because Warhammer is an English company. It's British, right? So uh, they've got 
They've got a, 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 a life-sized operational tank. Are you looking at Warhammer World right now? I I was talking to my friend Alex from England, and I'm like, I can't wait to go to Warhammer World. And he goes, I would love to come with you. And in my head, I thought, no way, I can't. I'm going by myself. <laughs> because if I took someone there with me, after two hours, they'd be like, can I go home? I'm like, shut up. Wait in the car. I'm looking at little models. <laughs> That's what I want to go to England for. And that's why it's your responsibility to buy tickets to this thing so that I can book flights so that I can go to Warhammer World. This is not, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do a good job at the show. Yeah, I'm, it's going to be really fun. Yes, this is a career milestone. I want to see a space marine. Have you seen, if you look at the, the fucking, look at Warhammer World, look at those dioramas they've got. Thousands of models and little cities built up. Looks very cool. Say that less sarcastically. <laughs> Looks cool, man. Start, no, that's not good enough. That's condescending. Oh, how nice. Well, not everyone goes to goes to a, a content and is like, oh, I reckon I'm going to eat beans. <laughs> like you. Oh, what would you do in England? Oh, I ate beans and they were horrible, so I got them two more days in a row. Oh, they also serve warm beer. You can't get a cold beer anywhere in that fucking country. What do you mean? It's room, all of it is room temperature. Really? Yeah. That's but uh, beer, beer, beer can't much. beer can't freeze, can it? Don't think so. So I don't think so. It doesn't freeze. So that because it's generally cold everywhere. That seems like an intentional choice to keep it room temperature. Yeah. Mmm. Can't wait for another warm beer. Bottle of warm beer. Yeah, and I don't drink very much, so. For me to get a beer is like a big step. Mm. Yeah, I just, um, I just really hope I make it through customs. To be honest, with all the, with all the royal stuff, I hope they don't. You know, you know this bloke, fucking get back to your country, convict. Oh, but that's not me. That guy has no chin. We're clearly different people. I don't think there is customs because I just flew in and walked out. <laughs> what do you mean? Because like my, my only experience with customs is New Zealand and America. And in America, I got treated like a terrorist. I got, I landed <coughs> in New York. Uh, in uh, no, I landed in LAX, and uh, and the uh, and then I transferred straight to New York. And then to leave the terminal, I got grilled by the guy. And he's like, "Where are you staying?" I'm like, "New York." I'm all excited. He goes, where? I'm like, in the city. And he went, New York is a state. I was like, I thought it was a city. And he went, it's both. And I went, is it? And he went, yes, where are you staying? I'm like, ah, uh, like uh, in an Airbnb. And he goes, what part of the city? And I went, ah, uh, New York's, you know, I thought it was like Melbourne. Like if you go, where are you staying? In the city. People know you're one of five streets, you know, but he's like, where are you staying? I'm like, in the city. And he goes, where? I'm like, ah, uh, and he goes, uh, he go I'm like, in an Airbnb. And he goes, do you know? I'm like, oh, I can look it up. And he goes, you don't know where you're staying? And now I start panicking. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get deported. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm staying in Airbnb. I can pull it up now. I don't really have internet right now. Um, And he goes, where are you staying? I'm like, I don't know. I think it's near Times Square. And he went, are you sure? And I went, yes. And he went, all right. And I think he just did it to freak me out. And then New Zealand, I landed there. And I had merchandise to sell for the shows. And customs pulled me up and went through my bags and they went, what's this? And I went, oh, that's merchandise. And they went, have you paid an import tax? And I went, huh? And they went, an import tax for importing goods that you want to sell. And I went, huh? <laughs> and uh, they taxed me a huge amount for every single T-shirt individually. They counted them and they taxed me and I sold every single one of those shirts and I lost money because they taxed the fuck out of me. And then the customs officer from New Zealand, bless his soul, right? Took out my box of posters, which I just, cause they, 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 you know, they don't weigh anything and they just fit in the suitcase with the camera bag. I usually just travel with like one or 200 of them because it's easier than counting them all out. And he, go, he looks at me in, in my life. You know when someone looks at you and like they don't want to enforce a rule that they're being paid to enforce? And he, ha he has this expression that they just says, tell me a lie. And he went, are you selling these? 
And I went, these posters? And he went, yes, because if you're selling them, I'm going to have to count them up individually and tax you for each item. And it looks like you have a lot of items in this box. So if you tell me that you're selling them, I would have to tax you for every item. And I went, couldn't I just throw them out? And he went, no, because that's the rule. So are you selling these or are you just maybe placing them on the walls of the venue? (laughs) Are they advertising? And I went, yes. These are advertising flyers for my show that I don't sell. And he went, okay, well, I'm going to tick this box then. Thank God for that guy. <laughs> um, so those are my only experience with customs is just getting bullied. But you flew to UK and it's different? Yeah, I just walked. Uh, I, um, I think there was like a sign that said, you're not, what are we in? Commonwealth. Commonwealth, Commonwealth citizens and mm. then foreigners. Did and they have anything for the, for the Minutemen or the Enclave or the Brotherhood of Steel? I don't know what that is. That's all right. Someone, someone listening will <laughs> continue. You just said Commonwealth. I don't get it. That's all right. All right. Um, oh, that's a fall, fallout reference. Hey, he's there. He's got it. <laughs> yeah, that's a fallout fall reference. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, maybe I am on fentanyl. The yeah, we just walked out. We just walked into the citizens thing, and there was no security. And then even to pick up our bags, there was just nothing. And then they scammed me when I got on the train. The benefit of uh, coming from a predominantly white country. Yeah. Right? No customs. Really easy. I was shocked because I thought they were supposed to kind of keep track of you how long you're in the country. Yeah. But they didn't. And then like a month later, I left out of Scotland. And I mean, how many English people are here that just overstay the fuck out of their visas? I feel like it's kind of an unsaid. Yeah, if you don't. If you don't care about our citizens, we won't care about yours. Yeah. England's cool. You got scammed by the train? Yeah, it was so stupid of me. I just didn't realise. Because in my head, I haven't planned it out yet because we don't have all the dates. But in my head, I'm going by myself and I'm not going to take a flight. I want to do the train Yeah. from city to city and just kind of be a backpacker. I'll take a small camera to film the shows and just do it like that. It'll be really cheap and it'll probably be an experience. Um, Someone said... Actually, in the comments of my video, they said uh, of the latest podcast, what did they say about the trains? They said something about the trains being a scam, um, didn't they? They said. No, I can't find it. Where is it? All right. Well. You on a train in the UK, here's a hint. Don't. The trains here are extraordinate. That's not even how you say the word. There are flights from Birmingham and London to Edinburgh that are way cheaper than catching the train. That's not how you say any of those words. Me. You want a train here in the UK, is it? Don't. The trains here are extortionate. There are flights from Birmingham and London to Edinburgh that are way cheaper than catching the train. Ball of war, war ball. God bless the Queen, Governor. I think that's what he said. That's how you pronounce extortionate. Um... He said the trains are really expensive and a yeah. ripoff, extortionate. Extortionate. Uh, yeah, well, when... Word of the day, extortionate. I thought, I thought you just like bought a Mikey and then like a, an mm. equivalent uh, and I paid like $80 at this machine and then realized that I'd actually just bought the wrong ticket and that you can just use your like your credit card or your debit card or whatever to tap on. Isn't that crazy? That's because you're from Melbourne. I was in... When I was in Sydney, I, I took a train with uh, with someone from Sydney... And I go, oh, hang on, I need to buy an Opal card or whatever, like their version of a Mikey card. And they went, no, no, you can just use Apple Pay on your phone. I was like, what? And they, and they went, they just, yeah, they went beep, beep. And then they just touched their phone. Yeah. They got no ticket, nothing. And then I did it. And then to get off, my phone died. And they went, oh, don't worry, just use the physical debit card and it'll transfer over and remember. And I was like, what the fuck? We have to buy a... $7,000 plastic card and load it up manually. And if you happen to go, on, go into a negative balance by 50 cents, you have to like top up. And if you miss your train, that's you miss your train. 
and and every other city has just been living in the present. We're living in the fucking Stone Age. So you just tap your debit card and get on the train. Yeah, and I didn't realize that. So I I paid out of the ass for a ticket I didn't need. But then there's other places like I was staying in this place called Amersham. To get to Amersham, you actually did not need to buy a specific ticket to buy to Amish, go to Amersham. I and mean, that was like a fucking scam. And I right. still didn't understand that. Yeah. And then to get to like, uh, I think I went from London to Glasgow and I had to buy a separate ticket for that. The Glasgow? Yeah. From London to Glasgow. Bit of a scam there, train system. Yeah. I can't wait to get scammed. Do you reckon I'll get stabbed when I'm in London? A lot of knife crime going on down there. That's all. Surely, how, to my six English viewers, is that's all fear-mongering bullshit, isn't it, right? Please, for the love of God, tell me that is. I want that to be true, but I know that my friend who lives in London has been robbed three times. <laughs> At knife point. <laughs> and he, he lives in a really nice area. <laughs> he's, still, he's still been robbed. So that's why I'll be travelling with a small camera. I'll wear my Stone Island hoodie and then and then people will be scared, be scared of me. Oh, fucking hell, mate. Look at that stony hoodie he's got on. That 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 uh that bloke's fucking hench. Looks like a proper a proper chav lad, isn't it? Bottle of water. My teeth hurt. Cavity? No, the only cavity you're going to have is a fucking stab wound in a minute, mate. Cool, blimey. Bottle of water. How American is this banter of mine? <laughs> I sound like an American making fun of a British person. It is fun to do. Um, All right, how long have we been going here? I've got some... 42 minutes. Do you oh. have an email? Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. I do actually. I've got a great email. If you want to send an... Uh, cor if you have any correspondence... Uh, with the show, uh, please uh, contact podcast at loosespears.com. That's podcast at loosespears.com, L-E-W, spears.com. Uh, I got an email from a listener about last episode. Uh, I complained about hard rubbish in my area, um, which a bunch of people in the comments section were also saying that uh, when you do hard rubbish... In Australia, the council actually puts up notices and drops letters in everyone's letterbox saying that you cannot reuse anything. Like if someone puts a TV out and you need a TV, you can't go and pick it up. It's illegal. They'll fine you for it. If you obviously you do it, but if they catch you, they reckon they'll fine you for it. And uh, a bunch of people saying that's happening in every council in the country and it's because they're worried about getting sued or something, which is, I think it's, fucking crazy that anyone would sue the council over that because it doesn't seem to be their fault um i don't know i, I just think it's like a silly thing for like a, a, a government that encourages re recycling and reducing and reusing it's like let let and also people who can't afford shit like let the poor people who can't afford a couch go and pick one up um, anyway, I put a TV out and I wanted to be a good Samaritan. And instead of putting a TV out with no power cable, I put a, I plugged a three point cable in there and then some junky animal cut the cable to strip it and sell the copper wiring in it. Or so I thought, okay, I got this email from a listener. Um, hi Lewis, big fan of the podcast, mate. Keep up the good work. I was listening to the latest episode about hard rubbish and how the cable from your TV was cut. I've got more bad news for you. It's most likely that the council cut the cable because they're worried about being liable if someone picks up faulty electronics from hard rubbish. I put a perfectly good working appliance out once and while I was putting out other hard rubbish, a council worker drove up, jumped out of the car and clipped the cable with no hesitation or remorse, making it completely unusable. I yelled at him and asked him why he did that and he told me it was an electrical risk and sped off looking for more shit to ruin. Unfortunately, it's not the junkies selling the copper, it's the council lawyers worrying about being sued. I'll leave it up to you, which is more depressing. Have a good one, Lockie. That sucks! What? Let the house burn down! Look, I feel like if... Someone picks up a fucking blender that's been outside and they plug it in. Surely 
they're smart enough to be like, oh, I'll, I'll just make sure this doesn't blow up the house before leaving it on unattended. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I feel, I feel like there's got to be a better system than council workers going around and destroying perfectly good electronics to make sure that they can't be reused in the, in the name of safety. Like, I don't know. Surely it would be a better use of their time to take that stuff, test it, make sure it's safe, and then give it away for free or sell it at a heavily discounted rate. Then the council could make money to build public toilets or hospitals or whatever. And then poor people could have cheap appliances that are definitely safe instead of just running around with a fucking... Well, I hope that council worker was keeping the cables and selling the copper. I think that's more depressing because at least a junkie is getting is smoking ice, you know, getting a bit of fent in their system with my power cable. You know what's really funny about what? It's very funny. That's why we're here. It's what we do. You know what's good about the difference between my surgery and Bobby's surgery, right? Bobby gets a bit of morphine and fentanyl in his system and just shits herself for four <laughs> days in a row involuntarily. I had Oxycontin and morphine and I didn't shit for a week. Very different systems. She couldn't stop pooing. I couldn't begin. Dude, that, that first morphine poo a week after was... Horrific. You know, I had not only because not only did I have to be helped to the bathroom, I also had to be helped out and helping to the bathroom. That was the easy bit, mm. but you know, I'm finished. I'm like, help, get me out of here. Help. I'm dying. I can't breathe. <laughs> you know, assistance kicks down the door. Immediately passes out. Help, there's two people stuck in the bathroom. We can't breathe. <laughs> you know, uh, Jazz talk reminded me, or I didn't know this because it's just off my face. Apparently in when I was in ICU after my second surgery, I was in ICU for like 24 hours and I was just in a glass box. Like I thought I'd have a, a private room, but it was a glass box, which obviously if you're in ICU, you need to be monitored because you could just die. That's why you're there. But I'm in this glass box. And I, rem I, I all I really remember was being annoyed that I couldn't sleep because there were always people around. And I thought that I, I thought it was silly that there were always nurses doing paperwork on this table that was a really small table. Um, and it shit me. I was like, why can't they do paperwork at the receptionist's desk? And then I would pass out from whatever they were putting in my IV. Jazz told me that what was actually happening was all of the nurses, because I was there for 24 hours, so throughout all the shift changes, all of the nurses were told that someone famous was in the ward. A famous person was in me. There was a famous person in ICU. So nurses from all around the hospital, even in like the, the fucking geriatric ward, the children's ward, you know, some... Some fat kids dying on a ventilator of COVID and the nurses come over to see the famous person in, in ICU. And uh, Jazz tells me that every single person came over to see the famous person and none of them knew who I was. Not a single, not a single person. And so for like 24 hours in a row, I thought they were doing important paperwork about me and looking after me. But everyone was just looking in at my incredibly fucked, swollen head having a look at my chart, Lewis Spears, and going, who? <laughs> who the fuck is that? Not that I should be known, but I think that's really funny. I was, just, I was just like disappointing people. Like one person watched a couple of YouTube videos and was like, this guy's famous. And the only interaction I had with anyone was, them, was, was one guy threatened to put a catheter in me if I didn't piss. <laughs> Which didn't... It, it, by the way, piss in public in the glass box while... Seven nurses watched the unfamous person try to wee in a bowl. All right, well, I think that's probably it, guys. I think that's the episode. Uh, we're going to continue on on Patreon. I've got a I've got a great thing for the Patreon. You're going to love it. I found um, 
a Reddit thread of of a guy who is who's done a series of posts in an unrelated subreddit. <laughs> this is the only good Reddit where you don't want the posts that Reddit is like. You want the posts from insane people. So there's a I found a guy who who at at these two things are happening at the same one same time. He's ha- he's having a, a wonderful realization that he's gay mm-hmm. and he's embracing his sexuality. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the first thing that's happening. The second thing that's happening is he's ha- he's, he's becoming very schizophrenic <laughs> and is getting worse. And those two things have combined, and he's embracing his schizophrenic sexuality, and it's fucking awesome. And I found a series of posts that this guy's made to an unrelated subreddit that has nothing to do with schizophrenia or sexuality, <laughs> it's great and we're going to experience it together. So that's the Patreon episode. Uh, Lou Spears, uh, patreon.com slash Lou Spears. Uh, sign up and uh, we've got an annual option that's much cheaper or we've got a monthly option. You get access to a Discord and the full backlog of like hundreds of Patreon episodes. Uh, it's great. Go check it out. Um, and thank you for listening. UK tour on sale now. I've got Gold Coast and then Brisbane and a bunch of other cities. Loosebears.com. Get your tickets, especially if you're in the UK but also especially if you're in uh, Gold Coast and Brisbane, those are filling up as well. They're going to be sold out. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll see you on Patreon. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.